You guys have been asking me to make a Baki training video for some time now, but I've been a little bit reluctant. Baki is like Batman on steroids. He's ostensibly a normal human, and yet he can perform absolutely insane feats. Keisuke Itagaki attempts to provide logical explanations for many of Baki's abilities, drawing on scientific explanations and genuine martial arts techniques. But here's the thing, those explanations take some serious poetic license. Are endorphins a thing? Sure, but they won't make you an invincible fighter. Surely adrenaline and the fight or flight response would have made more sense to go with here. Baki likewise can perform pull-ups too fast for anyone to see, eventually snapping the bar off and flying up into the air. When he sprints, he leaves craters behind him. His vertical jump is 20 foot. And that's another problem. There's just too much to delve into here. Where would we even start with a Baki training program? Carrying your entire gym up a mountain? Throwing yourself off a cliff? Wrestling apes? Fighting imaginary praying mantises? I didn't feel like a workout could really do justice to Baki's training. Even if we tried to focus on his aesthetics, that would mean developing back musculature to the point of it looking like a demon face. Nothing in this manga is subtle. But then I decided to take a step back and look at the themes here. Obviously, we can't develop a 20-foot vert, and I'm not going to recommend training to the point of hallucination. But we can apply some of the commonly occurring principles to our own workouts and take on the spirit of Baki training. And this actually gives me an opportunity to talk about some awesome stuff and to demonstrate some of the things I've spoken about recently in a more practical setting. Yes, it's finally time for a Baki training video. Forget beast mode, this is Baki mode. The pillars of Baki training. So what are those themes and principles? Baki is a grappler or effectively an MMA fighter. He needs to train like a fighter and especially in ways that relate to grappling. Baki pushes himself ridiculously far to break through human limitations. Baki workouts are badass. I think any Baki workout that tells you to perform regular curls and squats is going to fall a little flat. The good news here is that many of these things go hand in hand. So let's start with rotational strength and fighting apes because why not? Rotational strength is your ability to exert force on the transverse plane, to twist your body against resistance. This is critical for fighters, seeing as rotational strength is what you use when throwing a punch or a kick, and it's what you use when trying to twist an opponent to the floor. Baki demonstrates his incredible power as a fighter early on in the first saga, when he wrestles the Yasha Krag ape. This is of course a little beyond the realms of believability, just a tad, but there is one real world comparison we can draw. Wrestlers that used to fight bears. The bears wore muzzles and they had the nails clipped. It's also extremely cruel and definitely not cool. But this still demonstrates just how much force a much small human is capable of generating. An ape would rip your arms off though. Locked in a hold with a bear or ape, your only hope would be to pull against and twist them to the ground. And as I've discussed in the past, if all you're doing is squats and deadlifts, you won't have developed that amount of torque. There are those that proclaim that all you need is the big three lifts, but this simply doesn't make sense. Twisting the body requires strength in the obliques, the serratus and more. You can't create muscle damage or metabolic stress or mechanical tension in the muscles that aren't directly involved in a movement, no matter how much you want that to be true. If strength applies globally, then you would only need one exercise. This also ties into my recent discussions regarding the importance of training standing up. The bench press is performed lying down, therefore you aren't bracing the spine and the core when you push, and you aren't coordinating that strength with feedback from your muscle spindles, as Olympic wrestling coach Dustin Myers explains. When you're on your back pressing up, it's too late, you're pinned. I think it's important to de-emphasize everyone's favorite exercise, the bench press, and incorporate some different types of presses that also require a lot of core and back stability. This pains me as much as anyone, I love the bench press. In other words, if you have amazingly powerful pecs, but never use them in an upright stance, you're more likely to push yourself over. And again, simply performing regular exercises that everyone else uses, well that ain't backy training. The same goes for pulling strength, which is even more important for a grappler. This is where band and cable training comes in, alongside sandbags, kettlebells, medicine balls and club bells. These challenge you in every plane, force you to fight against momentum and shifting centers of gravity, and they challenge your strength endurance. They also offer us the repetition without repetition that I discussed in the last video, a quote from legendary movement physiologist Nikolai Bernstein. Man, it's almost like I planned these things out or something. In other words, it's no good only ever performing the same movement with perfect technique on a nice flat surface, because that's not how you use your strength in the real world. This is also the benefit of training outside, training barefoot and more. 
There's a reason that MMA fighters gravitate towards functional training methods and not simple powerlifting programs. I should note here that Baki training in the manga does include the bench press, but his bench at age 17 is rated at over 320 pounds when the manga starts, at which point he's already a champion. This is impressive, sure, but it's not impossible. It's about the only feat in this manga that isn't completely bonkers. But the inclusion of the bench press is also good, because the bench press allows us to pack on weight and it allows us to somewhat isolate the pecs, triceps and shoulders. This in turn means we can trigger more adaptation. The key is to practice this and upright dynamic movements in combination. Otherwise, you're going to be really powerful at pushing yourself away from the opponent, as you'll lack the core stability necessary to stay in one place. A Baki training program should place moves like the bench press and deadlift at the start of the workout after warming up, and then follow these up with more complex movements that use a lighter weight and incorporate endurance. Alternatively, we can place these on a separate day, which may make more sense as most of us won't want to carry our power racks into the woods. What's significantly more impressive than the bench itself is that Baki carries all that weight and his bench equipment up the mountain. That's about a thousand times more difficult and impossible. Clearly, Baki favours functional strength, the kind of strength and endurance that comes from a farmer's walk uphill. And this is where we see the other two aspects of Baki training come into play, pushing ourselves ridiculously far and training in a way that's truly badass. The strength training and work capacity are also critical here, a fighter needs to be able to continue exerting dynamic strength for a long time. Again, functional tools are perfect for this. Recently, user Curtis Cameron shared a video of the Patreon-exclusive Bioneers Facebook group that detailed the history of 19th century Indian club swinging contests. You can watch the video over at Physical Culture Historians. It's a fantastic and fascinating video, and I'll link to it in the description down below. In it, we hear about club swinging strongmen like Thomas Bax that were able to swing Indian clubs continuously for days on end without sleep. If that's not Baki levels of insane, I don't know what is. And this also demonstrates the crucial aspect of the iron will, of mental hardiness and pushing yourself past that point where you want to stop. Ex-Navy SEAL and ultramarathon runner David Goggins talks about the 40% rule, how at the point where your body is telling you that you can't train any further, you've probably only used about 40% of your max capacity. And this does trigger endorphins, certainly when performing endurance tasks, as this is what gives us the runner's high. I'm going to go into this in detail later, but suffice to say that we get feedback from our body regarding fatigue and exhaustion, at least partially from the free nerve endings in the fascia, interoceptors. However, this raw data needs to then be interpreted by contextual cues and cues from the environment in order to result in an action or a feeling. In short, if you can convince yourself that those fatigue signals are a good thing, then you can overcome the desire to stop and power through but it's crucial to understand the difference between your body making excuses for you and actual pain that signals an incoming injury. As much as Bucky is cool, we do need to be smart about our training here. But exercises like heavy carries and the car push are perfect demonstrations of moves that build endurance into their very DNA. This is something that JC Santana talks about, recalibrating the human will of his fighters. He explains in one talk how the car push is the perfect tool for this. Of course, any Bucky workout also needs to include high repetitions of calisthenics movements, things like push-ups and Hindi squats. And when we're talking Hindi squats, we're once again talking about the great wrestler Gamma, who apparently used to do something like 1,000 or even 5,000 Hindi squats a day. These are squats performed on the balls of your feet, and they're fantastic for building up massive quads, which we can all agree that Bucky definitely has. Now we're out in the woods, swinging heavy clubs, heaving heavy rocks, carrying logs and more. Maybe we're pushing cars too. We're training like real life anime characters, and it's no surprise that David Goggins also has a propensity for carrying logs around. This is the closest thing to Bucky training I could conjure up, but it's not new. If you want a cool example of someone who trains like this, then check out ex Spec Ops Pat McNamara, who trains like an absolute beast. And if you want to learn more about mace, kettlebell, and club training, then definitely go check out Mark Wildman's channel, which is just the best resource for that kind of thing. And while we can't go wrestling bears or apes, maybe we could try wrestling trees. Trees are the perfect isometric training tool, and again, we're drawing on great examples of historical strongmen here, like the wrestler Gamma, who also trained with clubs and maces and spent time trying to heave trees out of the ground. Gamma reportedly won over 5,000 fights with no losses. Gamma also reportedly performed a thousand Gamma casts, which were presumably just called casts at that point, with an 80 pound club every single day. Again, Baki levels. What's important during all this though, is to ensure that our Baki training is still built on a foundation of progressive overload. 
The problem with swinging things and lifting logs is that it can be tough to track progress. Again, that's where it's still useful to include exercises like the bench press, and also more dynamic movements that are easier to track and improve upon, like the cable wood chop, for instance, or calisthenic skills performed for high repetitions. So that's what a backy workout would look like. If you want to see a full routine, then be sure to check out the link in the description below, and this will take you to my blog where I've detailed an example. It's completely free to read online. Of course, it's more about the concepts than the specific execution though. And while you're there, be sure to take a look around. I upload a lot more content to the blog that doesn't get made into video format. I've recently discussed hill sprints in detail, talked about how we'll all be working in the gig economy soon, and discussed whether studies or experience are more useful for guiding training decisions. If you want more Bioneer content, that is where to find it. Of course, if you want a more in-depth total program for functional strength, endurance, and cognitive performance, then be sure to check out my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. And there's a discount on right now whilst many of us are still in lockdown. Here in the UK, we've just gone into a second full lockdown, so my hair's bad again. So if you found this video useful and interesting, guys, if you did, then please leave a like and share it around. That helps me out immensely. Thank you so much for watching this one and stay tuned for much more like it. And yeah, bye for now. Oh, and guys, if you caught my last video, then you'll know that I also have a new print book available for pre-order. That's called Functional Training and Beyond, which is available from January the 19th, and which will serve as a detailed introduction to using functional training concepts to enhance physical and mental performance. It's a journey through the history of physical culture that addresses the merit of countless training styles. Hopefully it's an eye-opening read that will provide everyone from beginners to pros with some new ideas to incorporate into their workouts. Check out the link in the description below for more, and thanks again for all your support.